Welcome to another UK Maths Challenge Intermediate Challenge. Here's the question. In a maths exam with N questions, you score M marks for a correct answer to each of the first Q questions and M plus 2 marks for a correct answer to each of the remaining questions. What is the maximum possible score? Now we're going to do a bit of a an algebra dance but we just need to remember not to lose track when we're dancing otherwise we're going to look silly so let's let's try to do it quite carefully okay for the first q questions here you can score m marks for each of them so what's our total score for q questions we score M marks if we score full marks. So what's our total score? It will be Q times by M. So for those first Q questions, if the mark we could get are M for each of them, our total score would be Q times M or MQ or QM, same thing. But what about the remaining questions? Well, here's a tricky thing. We don't quite know how many remaining questions there are. All we knew was that the first questions, there was Q of them. But there's N questions in total. There's N questions in total, and we've already scored full marks on the first Q of those questions. And that's where we get our MQ from. But how many questions are left? There's N in total, and we've already done Q of them. There'd be N takeaway Q left. So there is N takeaway Q questions left. And what do we get for each of those questions? The number of marks we get for each of those questions is M plus 2. So in the same way as for the first part we had Q questions and we get M marks for each of them, so we timesed it, here we have n takeaway q questions and we get m plus 2 marks for each of them and we're timesing them. Just for simplicity I'm writing them as two brackets next to each other which means multiplied together. Let's work that out. There are many different ways of doing double brackets like this but we could do the FOIL method which is the first multiplication, then the outside multiplication, then the inside, Q and M, and then the last, so Q times 2. Let's have a go at that. So we have N times M, which is NM. Then we have outside N times 2, which is 2N. Then we have inside minus Q times M. Don't forget the minus, so it's minus Q times M, which would be minus MQ. The reason um, I'm writing it as MQ is I'm just keeping it alphabetical. I could write QM, but generally we try to keep things alphabetical, which is why, really, it should be uh, MN, but because that's a capital, it's a little bit different. Okay, and the last one, minus Q times 2, which is takeaway 2Q. There we go, so that's what all of this equaled. Finally, our total marks is going to be our marks from the first Q questions plus our marks from the remaining questions. So we need to add these two together. So we're going to do all in one go. MQ, add all of this now. So NM and 2N, take away MQ and take away 2Q. That is our total marks. But you notice we have an MQ, takeaway an MQ, so that actually cancels out. And we're left with an NM still, a 2N still, and a takeaway 2Q. And that should be one of these options. So this should be, if we're looking across, they have these two actually have n in common um, so we could factorize that little bit 
So we could do, for example, there's, there's many different ways of factorizing this. We could factorize the second part using a 2 or the first part using an n. We don't have to because it's, it's answer A. If you notice, times the m and the n, you get mn. Times the 2 and the n, you get 2n, and you get take away 2q. But just so we can write it as they did, we'd have an n, and then inside m plus 2, and a take away 2q. And so there we go. We have answer A, and we got that by thinking carefully about how many questions we've got, how many marks we get for each of them, multiplying it and adding it all up.